it is possible to be calmly active and actively calm while performing our duties in this world. We can function from a platform of inner joy. No matter what's happening around us, no matter what's happening to us, we can still be joyful. Taitre Upanishad says, from joy we have come, for joy we live, and in that sacred joy, one day we shall melt again. In a world of duality, where we see so much pain and suffering, such a statement might ap appear to be unrealistic. Isn't it so? But we cannot take the words of Nupanishad lightly. We may not fully grasp the full import of this statement, but if we follow the principles well mapped out by ancient seeds, one day we will realize in our own lives the veracity of such a statement. Another scripture, Bhagavad Gita, says, referring to yoga meditation, even a little practice of this yoga meditation will save you from dire fears inherent in this life. It seems, as long as we have life, what is guaranteed is anxiety. Whether it's a boy of 10 years, or a youth of 20 years, or a 40-year-old businessman, or a manager, or a housewife, or a retired person, what next? What? That anxiety is so much a part of our lives, everyone. By Practicing yoga meditation, we are not assured that we would be free from troubles and problems. But the anxieties and the fears that arise out of these troubles and problems can be conquered. And we can perform our duties and responsibilities by being calmly active and actively I would like to share with you an analogy. If you have fever, you go to a doctor. Doctor gives you a medicine, paracetamol. Paracetamol, if you take, that reduces the temperature. But is it all what a doctor gives you? No. Paracetamol only reduces the temperature. That's only symptomatic relief. Doctor also gives you another medicine, antibiotic. Isn't it so? Because the bacteria inside, which is causing this temperature, needs to be removed. Until that bacteria is cleared, there is no real relief. Similarly, I have problems, financial problem, family problem, professional problem, relationship problem, psychological problem, social problem. There are so many problems. Trying to remove this financial problem, family problem, professional problem, is like aiming at symptomatic relief. Until we find out the real reason of these problems, which is inside, the root cause of these problems and remove it, there is no real relief. Isn't it so? That's why solve one problem, few days later another problem, yet another problem. Because the root cause of all these problems sitting inside, that needs to be addressed. What is that root cause which is giving these external problems? Ignorance. Agnyan. Ignorance. Ignorance of our real potential, the true potential, the divinity within. We have the potential to solve all these problems until we recognize that divinity within and nurture it and take help of it, we can't be free from the problems permanently. See, I have a body. I have to take care of this body by proper diet, proper exercise. If I do that, 
in turn body gives me health ability to move around but i also have a mind i have to take care of my mind too by intellectual pursuits if i do that mind in turn gives me intelligence the ability to get along but we should recognize that in addition to body and mind i also have a soul and i have to nourish the soul too the proper nourishment for the soul is meditation deep contemplation when we do that when we properly take care of our soul it in turn gives me creativity intuition unconditional joy perfect love which we are all seeking intuition for example is not a characteristic of my of a mind creativity doesn't come from my mind it comes from my soul so if i cultivate that soul properly it helps me it guides me through my intuition through my creativity that perfect unconditional joy no matter what's happening around me no matter what's happening to me i can be joyful if only i cultivate that that soul so there must be a harmonious development of body mind and soul until we recognize and cultivate that soul really we can't we can't be free from problems now i would like to address one question what is god there are many many descriptions of god books have been written lectures spoken all are right in their own right but for me the description of god which is closest to my heart is this god is sachidanan but what is sachidanan a name we have been hearing from childhood we name our children too but what does it mean let me explain god we have no concept of god we don't know but whether god is he or she or it whatever if there is someone known as god can that someone be sorrowful even if we don't know much let us start from the assumption that god is joy i'm sure we are not making any mistake by assuming this god is joy god is anand but to say god is joy is a grass grass understatement god is not simple joy for instance when i take a mango i am joyful a second mango gives me further joy a third mango doesn't give me the same joy fourth i don't want to take fifth i may hit the person who gives me because the theory of diminishing returns the theory of marginal utility this applies not only to mangoes to every item to every experience in this creation is hit by this principle isn't it so there is an experience which i like so much once twice thrice but slowly slowly that interest fades it doesn't give the same joy but this doesn't apply to god and god contact god is not joy god is ever new joy nitya navin anand that is what god is nitya navin anand god may be nitya navin anand ever new joy but what good it is if it takes if he is not aware of his joy no it's like a, a prince son of a king if he is playing with slum dwellers doesn't matter if as long as he knows that he is a prince by evening he will get back he is aware of that it doesn't matter similarly god he is not only ever new joy he is ever aware ever conscious of his ever new joy he is ever conscious of ever new joy consciousness means what in sanskrit it's known as chit god is chidanan ever conscious ever new joy god may be ever new joy and he may be ever conscious of ever new joy but what good it is if it exists only for a little while and then gone now that's for me because i can only conceive with my birth and death but god is god was and god will be god is ever existing god is ever existing 
ever conscious ever new joy what ever existing is what that is truth sat that is what god is for me god is sat chit anand ever existing ever conscious ever new joy but i won't stop here when i talk about god i would say my full definition of god is this god is sachidanand and aham brahmasmi you heard that aham brahmasmi is not my statement it's fundamental truth declared by all religions all scriptures in different words aham means i i am brahman meaning potentially i am ever existing ever conscious ever new joy i mean that is it's not my de- my explanation it's the fundamental truth each one of you each one of us that is why it is possible to live in joy because that's my real real nature i had to tap it i had to i had to tap it one religion may say aham brahmasmi yet another says you are son of god third one says that you are born in the image of god or yet another religion says we are all different expressions of the same divinity meaning that divinity is in me ever existing ever conscious ever new joy but i have one more thing i would like to explain this joy because joy is not something unknown to us we are joyful many many times even now but this joy of god god contact has three shades i would say it is physiological psychological and spiritual physiological in the sense when i take a mango my taste buds get excited and that's why i am joyful similarly when we meditate there is there is lightness in the body body doesn't feel carrying 60 kilos there is lightness eyes you you know physiologically there are some changes you are joyful and for me to be joyful i don't have to take a mango or a sweet if i hear some good news something happened to my family or country or something i am joyful because physically nothing happened but psychologically something is happening here to my mind and that's why i am joyful same thing happens when we contact god in yoga meditation psychologically psychologically we are joyful because it is psychological to the joy and then third more important for me is spiritual it has a spiritual shade to explain this i would like to share with you a quotation given by sri sri params yogananda ji author of this spiritual classic autobiography yogi who my follow my master guru he said that when that bliss comes over you you recognize it as a conscious intelligent universal being to whom you may appeal and not as an abstract mental concept mark his words he said when that bliss comes over you you recognize that bliss as a conscious intelligent universal being to whom you may appeal that means that joy is not that joy comes out of meeting someone or eating some food it comes with a sense of higher presence this joy you recognize as a conscious intelligent universal being to whom you may appeal i don't mean that we are going to see a person there on a throne with two ha- heads and four hands like that no i don't mean without seeing anyone without seeing anything without hearing anything still you have the conviction to the core to the core of your inner being that yes some higher being it's not it's not any vision it's not an imagination but that conviction to the core of your very very being that yes a conscious intelligent universal being a supreme being to whom you may the connection is felt each one within and that is the proof for existence of inner joy call it joy if you are shy to use the word god just call it joy or love wisdom they same god doesn't mind i mean that that is that is the definition of god for me ever existing ever conscious ever new bliss that's what i am potentially when i can realize that i can perform my duties responsibility in this world from a platform of inner joy same thing is happening same thing same thing don't you feel some see that two different persons react in two different ways to the same situation one calm other restless and we can be all the time irrespective of what's happening around us can be because that is a real real nature now i would like to share with you a small incident 
in IIT Kharagpur, one of our uh, core research scholars was appearing for his Viva was exam after his PhD. That was the final defense. We were all waiting in the seminar hall. The external examiner was Professor B. Nag from Department of Electronics, Delhi, the one who built the first computer in India, 70s. He came a little late. Just as soon as he entered, he asked our head of the department, Professor Sarap, said, where is the candidate? Then he introduced, he is the candidate. As soon as he saw Professor B. Nag, external examiner, step back. You, you appear so relaxed as if the exam is already over. I mean, otherwise normally exam means what? Tap, 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 tap. Usually, I mean, this man, he has been meditating, practicing Kriya Yoga, I start by Paramahams Yoga Nanaji. He said, what is there to be worried about it? I prepared, I'm thorough, I'm here for the exam. I mean, he didn't display any anxiety, calmly active and actively calm. One person approached his saying, put a question. Sir, I am very active, very busy in life. I don't have much time. Please tell me what is God in one sentence. He said, why one sentence? One word will do. Silence. What? God is silence. Yes. Then what is silence? Meditation. How do you meditate? In silence. How do you get that silence? By meditation. Here, the three words, God, silence, meditation, are used as if they refer to the same thing, which is true in a higher sense. Because the silence which this saint is speaking about is not the mere silence of vocal cords. Vocal cords have to be silent. Thoughts have to be silent. Emotions have to be silent. Anxieties have to be silent. Eyes have to be silent. Skin has to be silent. All senses have to be silent. For me, a better word is stillness. Everything is still. That is known as interiorization, antarmukhi. Instead of going outside, we see inside. What is inside? divinity, your, your true potential, Satchidanan, the true ever new joy. I mean, that is the fifth step in Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga, Yam Niyam, Asan, Pranayam, Pratyahar. That is, that is still, if you follow Pranayam, Yoga meditation, you get that stillness where anxieties are not there, sensations are not there, thoughts are not there, you are still. If I am a spark of God, as all religions say, Aham Brahma say, why can't I see that divinity in me? Why can't I see that image of God in me if it is there? The classical example given in spiritual literature is this. If you want to see the deflection of moon and a lake, the lake has to be still. If the lake is ruffled, you can't see the deflection. Even if you see, it is distorted. Similarly, the reflection of God is in me, divinity. But I can't see the divinity because the lake of my mind, the lake of my consciousness are always ruffled. Meditation is a process, scientific process. We act on our own life force, pranayam, on life force. It slowly, slowly, slowly quietens the whole system. Heart is quietened. Thoughts are subdued. Emotions are reduced. And there in that stillness, you, you find you realize you are higher, higher self. So it is not in doing, but in being, we experience the divinity. It is not in action, but in awareness, you perceive that you are true potential. When you tap that potential, no matter what is our external lo role in this world, we can be better, better individuals, being calmly active, and actively, actively calm. I mean, active, you know. While we're acting, we should be calm. When we're calm, you know, we take better decisions. Then what is meant by actively calm? Means calmness can be sleep, or laziness, but it's not really, big, that's passive. Whereas, even if you're not externally active, calmly you are enjoying that true nature within. That is being 
calmly, I mean, actively calm. So it is always possible, change within, change within, to be calmly active and actively calm and perform from a platform of inner joy. No matter what's happening around us, no matter what's happening to us, we can always be joyful. I mean, this is the greatest revelation for me in this life. What I found, what convinced is suffering and happiness can go together. There may be suffering around me. I have a body. Body goes through its own problems. There may be events go wrong. There may be suffering, but I can still be joyful. The suffering and happiness can go together. That's the greatest revelation. Pain and joy can coexist. We don't have to be, I mean, sorrow, even though things are not going according to the script, according to what we want. Namaskar. <laughs>